Hey, man, how are you? I'm good. I themed how are you? Our, I themed dress for my show today. I love it, man. That's awesome. Yeah, so last time we talked about this, you were raising money, and you just uh, you just sent a check in at 250K to direct relief, eh? Yeah, so the the amount that we've raised all together is over half a million dollars. Oh, um, but there's a certain way that you um, have to present the money, you know, with all the craziness that's going on in the tax world and government and everything. So that's the first installment. There'll be another installment uh, in December. Yeah. So, cool. um, but that was kind of like the first half of the check because um, it was 230 on that that check, and then the band. Um, Shine Down itself, we had put 20k of our own money too. But that 230 is all you and the fan base, man. Like worldwide, and uh, like I said, we got another one coming in December for them. But it was good to like physically get that check off. Yeah, there you go. For people that don't know, you make you had these shirts made up for uh, Atlas Falls, and you and then you raise money uh, for this uh, direct relief. And uh, the shirts were like, I don't know, like 50 bucks or something like that. But it's, uh, it's a cool thing that you guys uh, did out there. So, so how you doing, man? Good to see you again. I'm good, man. You know, obviously there's a lot going on. Um, and, uh, a lot of behind the scenes of what is transpiring in regards to this project, Smith and Myers and coming out here being, it's interesting being only like 10% of the touring world, right? right now like able to go out and actually do these drive-in shows you know i saw yesterday where you know there's some states that are being aggressive um in regards to um live events bars letting everybody go back at full capacity Mm -hmm. um obviously everybody has an opinion on that um but i want to assure people that any show that you see myself and zach doing um that has been very, very diligently uh, gone through with a fine tooth comb, man, in regards to those states. We have permission from the governor. We have permission from, you know, the chief of police, the sheriffs in those towns, um, obviously the directors of the health board in those cities and those counties and in those states, the mayors. Um, we're, we're not um, we're not messing around, man, with people's safety. You know, we we're doing these driving shows. We've done three so far. We've not had any incidents. Um and everybody's good. And so far, they're working out, you know, really, really well. I know it's a little bit odd, but it's all in what you make it, man. For the most part, you know, people are coming out. They're having a great time. Um, and we're just trying to do what we can, man, to be able to play in front of people. Now, you're going to be coming here, of course, uh, in a couple of weeks. So with these shows, do you guys play with big speakers and stacks of speakers? Or is it pumped in through the radios? How does that work? It's actually kind of both. Um, the very first one that we did was in Philadelphia. That was all you tuned your radio uh, to a certain dial that they gave you. Um, and it was an HD feed. Uh, so there was no PA. Um, we were the first show in Philly where they actually allowed them to get out of their cars, though, kind of like in their area. Yeah, yeah. Um, and the last two shows that we did, Butler, 20 minutes outside of uh, Pittsburgh, um, and then Scranton, uh, those were with PAs. Um, actually, the show in Butler was quite a massive PA. So, uh, But you could also tune the radio um, if you want to stay in your car. Because it was also about 41 degrees um, <laughs> when we uh, when we played. <laughs> so it was a little well, chilly. You haven't been to Detroit, Michigan and played at a show in October, man. As soon as they – because we have three of these shows lined up now. We've got you guys, we've got Steel Panther, and we got uh, Pop Evil. And I mean yeah. – it could be snowing when you're here. We don't know. It could be 80. We don't know. So. To be totally honest with you, man, we're, we're ready for anything. Yeah. Um, uh, you know, once again, you have to adapt into these situations. Our, uh, our release party for Volume 1 is uh, coming up the 9th later this week, um, and that's in Chicago. And fingers crossed, right now it shows the time that we're on stage, um, 71 and clear. So I'm like, hey, I'll take it if that's for real. (laughs) No, that's cool, man. So uh, let me ask you this. You've probably been asked this before, but where does like Shine Down end and Smith and Myers begin or vice versa? How do you how do you how do you like uh, how do you keep them separate? Well, I think it's important for people to understand if you're really kind of diving into this project, meaning Smith and Myers, you'll see that it's not a band. 
it's not a group, it's a duo. It literally is me and Zach. Um, if we wanted to go in and do an acoustic album as Shinedown, we would have gone in and done an acoustic album as Shinedown. That's not what Smith & Myers is. If that's what you're looking for, it's not that. Um, you know, obviously we live with the music and we know a lot more than the public does, um, but they're getting ready to know because both volumes are going to be released. Volume one's on, uh, I believe, the ninth. Uh, which is this Friday. Um, and then the second volume will be released on the 23rd of October, which is actually Eric's birthday. Um, but that's kind of the principal point. Why would we have gone in and, you know, done essentially an acoustic shine down style album and that just be me and Zach. These are different songs. These are being done in a different way. Um, I sing these songs differently. Um, I approach this project differently. Um, You know, I'm in Charleston right now. We're nine songs into the demoing process for Shinedown number seven, Hmm. um, which, by the way, has got me really, really pumped because it's just really heavy and it's good. And, you know, we're really pushing the envelope here with the new Shinedown, um, making it actually less tracking and focusing more on the dynamic of instead of having layers of guitars really focusing on like three tracks of guitars centering it out um and really doing more as a band where it is more a little bit more compelled to drums bass guitar uh and vocals obviously we use a lot of soundscapes And we don't limit ourselves to that, but we're not stacking a lot so far on these demos. We're really trying to put a lot of energy in these songs with less tracks. And it's actually working out really well. The material is really exciting, actually. Yeah, it's interesting you say that. Some of the stuff I'm really drawn to right now, like the Dirty Honeys and the Grettos and the Rival Sons, that kind of stuff, it's like really stripped down kind of band stuff. And that's kind of what you're talking about, maybe with a couple of layers added in there. Yeah. Also, you know, not looking at, uh, you know, for the tech people that might be watching this right now and and what have you, we're not gridding anything either. Like we're not going in. I mean, we're making sure that Barry has a click so that, you know, we can make sure that the uh, the metronome can kind of float, um, but that it kind of stays where it needs to. But we're not hard. We're not quantizing anything. We're not gridding it out, man. It has no vibe when you do that. It, it mm. sounds like a computer is playing it there's why there's no reason to do that you know um and and it's got a different feel to it man it's got a lot of push and pull but in but in all the good ways of pushing and pulling when it comes to music so you probably i don't know if you can answer this or not but 2021 for a new shine down you think or what 100 percent. yeah okay yeah, yeah I'm, i mean if i'm a betting man you know looking at you know you know we've been friends a long time um and been working together for a long time in the last two weeks, um, you know, us as a band, you know, we're getting offers for headlining spots for certain area festivals and things like that in North America for next year, stuff that's like late August, early September, um, into kind of this, you know, part of the, you know, a year from now. Um, and there's a lot of them. And to be totally honest with you, we're just not saying no to any of them. We're like everyone that comes through, we're just checking it off. Um, And I don't think that these organizers would be putting this at the forefront right now, you know, and knock on wood, but to to have these shows be canceled. Right. You know what I mean? Like we're we're trying to go a year out um, and really do everything in our power, man, to be able to do big shows by this time next year yeah well that'd be the that'd be awesome actually you know i mean obviously you guys played here last year a big show and uh i love when you guys strip it down you went up and you did a simple man and whatnot i'm gonna bring you up here in a second but somebody just posted on here that show was crazy by the way just real quick that show was insane the amount of people that were at that show just getting up there to the lawn (laughs) of all the shows that we did where we were doing that which on that tour we were that was, I and mean, it was awesome, but my God, were there a lot of people. <laughs> was Did uh, did Jake help you get up there? Was he? he no, was, that's John. He, John, okay. John, Jake is working. Jake is still very, very much a part of us and our family, but um, he's kind of on hiatus right now, too. His boy, Dave Chappelle, who yeah. he does security for, 
his stuff just got shut down in Ohio. So they're kind of like back to the drawing board with that. But yeah, he's been working with Dave Chappelle for the last couple of years. But um, John Guarney is our uh, is a uh, part of our security team now. That uh, he did all the he did all the marathon runs with me during that tour. <laughs> That's so funny because uh, I interviewed Ivan from Five Finger Death Punch on the lawn one time after the doors had opened. I'm like. Are you sure you want to go up there? He's like, yeah, I want to go up there. I'm like, all right. <laughs> that was pretty wild. Yeah. So, hey, somebody. Did he hide himself? Like, you wear a hat? I mean, he's no. kind of hard to not recognize. Oh, he walked up there waving everybody. <laughs> I'll send you a picture later. But, uh, hey, somebody has mentioned something. And since we're doing this, uh, the, the, we, we can see each other. I thought, you know, I'm going to bring in some pictures, okay? Someone yeah. just said, hey, I miss your long hair. So this 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 is one of the many pictures we have in my room, in my house. Yeah. Uh-huh. Long hair, guys. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. That one was at uh, the uh, the racetrack with three doors down. Oh yeah, totally. It's yeah. you know what, man. It's the last two days I've been doing interviews, uh, international interviews, and and what have you. Must be something like in the air or what have you. Everyone has been talking about like when I had long hair. It's interesting <laughs> how that kind of comes around. Um, yeah, I got asked uh, a little while ago, like, "Come on, man, like." Will you ever grow it back out? And I'm like, I don't know. I have no idea. It's it's so interesting. Hair still is like one of those things that's associated with like rock and roll, where yeah. now I kind of look at it as I think the more rock and roll thing is, you know, the haircut <laughs> I have right now, because people are just like, dude, aren't you like part of this big band and this and that and the other? And I'm like, yeah, man, for the hour and 30 minutes that I'm on stage, you know what I mean? I always I have friends of mine and God bless them, man. I love them. But when they walk around gig ready, like just in their everyday life, I'm like, dude, what are you doing? You know what I mean? Like, just got eyeliner on. It's like broad daylight. They're in a mall. I'm like, you know, look at me right now. I'm like in shorts and a regular T-shirt. It's like, you know, do you, do you, on stage, yeah, I'll do what I need to do. But just in my everyday life, man, I'm I dress down. <laughs> so um, it's, it's funny. So so before uh, we get on to, I want to talk about Simple Man here in a second uh, because that one that one here at the radio station. But you were talking about live shows and stuff. And one time in Las Vegas, I got the chance to do your your pre show ritual. And I don't know if I've ever talked to, to you about this uh, on, on the air, but maybe uh, for the people that are watching right now, what what do you guys do for your pre show ritual? So it's called doo doo, and yes, I know how that sounds. Uh, if you want to know how it's spelled, it's D O O dot 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 D O O. So we have a um, the very first real LD lighting director that we had um, that like really knew what he was doing, and we carried production. Was a wonderful individual by the name of Scott Ali. He's still to this day a dear friend of the band, mine. Uh, just. He's part of our family. Um, he moved on um, and now works and is a foreman in big, big construction for children hospitals and things of that nature. So a wonderful, wonderful person. Um, but he would always walk around um, and get everybody pumped up. But he always had like this charismatic, um, just the way that he was around people. But he would always, when he got excited, he would like rub his fingers together and be like, ooh, doo-doo. Like he would say that all the time. He'd be like, doo-doo. He'd do that. And so for whatever reason, and it usually was like when like really good beer would come through the cooler, you know, Barry Kurtz being the beer, you know, connoisseur that he is and what have you, him and Scott would just get all these crazy beers and stuff like that. And it started with him and Barry cheersing each other, but screaming at the top of their lungs, um, do, do, do until like they, you know, saw stars and then one person got added to it. The other person got added to it and it just kept growing and growing and growing. And so the hour out, um, what the ritual is, is everyone knows this. Um, you have to look at the set time. If you're a guest of ours backstage or what have you, you're totally welcome to come in and do, do, do with us, but you need to look at the set time and you have to be in the dressing room an hour out. Before we walk on stage, you get a beer or a soda or a shot or whatever your drink of choice is. You get in the huddle and basically Barry counts it down three, two, one. And you scream at the top of your lungs, (laughs) do, 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 um, literally and try to make yourself pass out. (laughs) Um, Once you do that, 
Uh, you have to cheers everybody with like a weird look. Everybody has to have a different look or what have you. And you have to finish your beer, soda, water shot before you leave the room. Um, and that's kind of the pre-show ritual. Yeah, that was a great memory. I did that with you guys in Las Vegas. And then it was funny because I walked out of there and I saw Vinnie Paul. Yeah, the, yeah Vinny's been in, Vinny was in there. Yep. Yeah, A lot of people have been in there, man. It's... Uh, it's um it's one of those things where uh it's a little bit like folklore um and uh but it's interesting too barry always tells people also like in the future you know if you're not on the road with us and you come in for doo-doo if you're late if you're ever late because you're not paying attention to the set times of the hour out you are exiled from <laughs> doo-doo. you can't do it anymore <laughs> I, I just heard that john bon jovi did this thing where if you can make two world tours with him and not miss a date like road crew the whole thing that they give you, he gives you like this special, like Superman diamond pendant or something. You do two world tours with him. Do you guys do anything special for your guys? Uh, we give them a retainer. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Fair enough. Yeah. Um, hey, so uh, so Simple Man just won the uh, best cover on our uh, cover, our sixty four covers on WRIF.com. I don't know if you knew about that. We had like Explain a that to me again. What's that? Explain that to me again. So we had a bracket of 64 covers. and, and 64 Simple, covers, okay. Yeah, and Simple Man won. Did you know that? I don't know if you knew that. I, I had no idea. Are you serious? Yeah. Just I had no idea. Ago. Oh, my yeah. God. I'm honored. Like, yeah. we all are in the in the, in the the band. Like, no, I had no idea. Yeah. So I decided to pass that on to you. I thought it was uh, it was pretty cool. So When did hey, you do yeah. that? What's that? When did you do that? I think, I think it, it wrapped up, like, just a couple of weeks ago. We've been doing these brackets, you know. Six That's amazing, man. Things. My God. Yeah. So I'm, you guys I'm overwhelmed of, by that. Yeah, you guys beat out a lot of really cool covers. But uh, Wow. Hey, speaking of songs and stuff, so what is the song you're most proud of writing? Oh, my gosh, Meltdown. Come on, man. Um, <laughs> that's, like, that's like the hardest question in the world. Um, I'm going to say something, and it's going to sound like... Um, it's not stock by any means. Um, I, I I haven't written it yet. It really? Okay. Fair enough. I haven't written it yet. Um, I never go into a writing process trying to look at the song like I'm just going to hang it on the wall. And what that means is I don't go into a song going halfway through it. Ah, this may not make it or, you know, ah, maybe this is just an album track. You know, that kind of mentality, like back in the day was this idea, not from me, but I've seen this with other people where it's like, you know, as long as you got three singles, the rest of it can be whatever. And that's a terrible attitude. Yeah. Like, you know, every single song that I write, um, whoever I write it with or if I just write it myself, um, I give it my undivided attention and I'm not trying to write songs fast. Um, I don't care about the quantity. I care about the quality. Um, I don't like to repeat myself. I try not to repeat myself. Um, yeah, so every song that, you know, I go into the procedure and, you know, the way that I write songs, I'm always trying to make sure, you know, I've gone a step above whatever the last one was that I wrote. Um, and you learn, you know, living life that teaches you a lot of things. And, and that allows you to be, in my opinion, a better songwriter. You know, the more you go out in life and experience, no matter what life is handing you, um, you still go out and live it. Um, so I don't know, man, I haven't written it yet. I've written a lot of songs that I'm proud of. It would be very difficult for me to put um, one song in particular at the top of the list. I guess if I had to kind of answer the question, I've been asked before what song I feel represents the band mm -hmm. um, Shine Down the most, if I could only pick one. Um, and I've been pretty consistent over the years with that. Of the 27 singles and the six albums, um, I think if you had one song to play somebody that didn't know what Shine Down was about, I would play them The Sound of Madness. And that would okay. probably that would probably give them an idea. Yeah, that's a great song. Uh, last thing here for you, I'm running out of time. So, what about a song that you wish you would have written? Wow, um, it would actually be um, man. You know what? That's a hard one too. 
Um, I don't know if I would look at it like I wished I would have written it, but I'm glad that I was able to present it um, and give it its and and give it an acknowledgement that maybe some people didn't really realize how powerful it actually was. And that's keep on rocking in the free world, which mm. is, you know, on volume one of the Smith and Myers um, that's coming out this Friday, you know, and it has a lot to do with the second verse. So I guess, you know, a song that I wish I would have been in the room. Let's put it that way. When it was written. Do you have um, to ask Neil Young for permission for that? Or you you guys just cover that song and just, you have to ask for permission. No, you have to ask for permission. Okay. Yeah. Um, and, um, and and his publishers have to agree upon it. And um, we're getting ready to release um, the video that we did for that song. Um, and, um, you know, we, you have to kind of make sure you go through the right chain of command. Um, you know, getting the audio when you cover someone's song um, is a little bit easier than when you get the audio and a visual mm. of it as well. Um but a lot of the reasons why I, I, I say that particular song is because the original song is very four on the floor, punk rock, rock and roll. It kind of goes by and you don't really realize what he's saying in that song. And that's why we chose to take that song and reimagine it um, and really focus on the lyric and the story. That's why we chose to, to do it with a piano. Hmm. Um, but in my opinion, that second verse is probably one of the most poetic verses in mainstream music history, in my opinion, because he says, um, I see a woman in the night with a baby in her hand under an old street light near a garbage can. And now she's put her kid away and she's gone to get a hit. She hates her life and what she's done with it. And now there's one more kid that will never go to school, never get to fall in love and never get to be cool. Mm. And even when I say it, I get emotional because that's just profound and it's heartbreaking and it's real. Um, and, you know, that was one of the elements of this project with Smith and Myers and, and me and Zach. Like we wanted to take songs if we were going to cover them where we could flip them on their head in a way, almost to the idea of like, what would we have done if we would have written them? Mm. Um, so a lot of the integrity of those covers, we wanted to really maintain why they're important. A lot of it had to do with the stories of those songs and, um, and, and what the message is. Well, I look forward to it here in both volume one and volume two, like you said, it comes out uh, this Friday for volume one and volume two on the 23rd of October. Then we'll see you right in the middle. Yep. Can't wait, man. Super in stoked. weeks. So, Brent, safe travels and stuff. Uh, we'll see you, like I said, in a couple of weeks. And uh, thanks so much for the time, as always. Absolutely. Love you, my friend. Take care of yourself. I'll see you soon. Right back at you, bro. Thanks, man. Later.